Right. Today, uh, I said that we will be discussing after the basic uh, discussion about PHP as a server-side stripping language. Uh, today, uh, we have to discuss about the form handling part uh, using PHP, right? So HTML forms, we are going to use HTML forms. Hope you can remember HTML form is basically used to get a user input. We have used this in JavaScript too. So we have used an HTML too. And here we are using that in PHP now. Actually provide an interface to user to interact with. User can input data, text data, like name. Uh, user can select uh, whether, uh, so is it a, so select the gender, whether it's a male or female, likewise user can check and uh, user can select. Uh, the, uh, then drop down boxes to select choices, especially the country like thing will come like a drop down box. So likewise, different form elements are there. So these form elements are useful in getting information from user that is the usage to the server side. The other hand, the form elements to the user side is they can provide the feedback. Actually, in Facebook, the commenting element is also a kind of form element. Commenting section is also kind of form element. So anyway, some forms are bigger, some forms are smaller. So for an example, if you're applying or if you're registering uh, for a um, educational or job website, maybe you have to fill a uh, little like, so if you're applying for a visa uh, like thing, so you have to fill a bigger application because they need more data. But if I just comment it, if you are just selecting option, yes, no option. So then you have only one or two items in the form. So that depends on the need or the requirement. So form tag can be defined like this form name and you can give a name so this is very important because in the programming for the identification purpose we need the form name and the method is another important section so method can be either get so if you are not mentioning the method method will be get or if you explicitly mention method get still then that will that will be get so get will send data through url so get will update the url through url only get will send data but post, on the other hand, so post will send data secretly. So actually, the viewers cannot see data. So that is the advantage. It can even send large files. It can send unlimited amount of data. So, but in the get, you have limited. Get URL has a limit, but post is not a URL. So it's not having that limit. That is about get and post, right? So let's see them before we begin. So how get works. Okay, you can see this one, uh, zoom.us and you can see some data in the URL. So mostly this data comes in the get method. So let's use Google for searching. And when you start Google searching, so let's search for, let's search for my name, I'm searching myself. And you can see the data is sent to URL. Yes, search Q equal the one. So you can see that means the data sent to the URL. So data which is sent to the server via URL. You can see here Q equals the Sunil engine. Actually, the thing is, if you are sending data through get, so if by editing the URL, you can edit form data, right? By editing the URL. For an example, let's say, uh, yeah, let's say you want to search about uh, Kasun Munasingh. You can update here the Sunil engine to Kasun Munasingh and send that through the URL. You can see the text is also updated now. It is updated to Kasun Munasingh. So that is the URL. So URL update will reflect in the input uh, field, input text box also. That is actually get request. So what do you think is get request is secure or insecure? Is get secure or insecure? What do you think? What's your idea about this request? Is it secure to send data through URL or is it insecure to send? Situm? Situm, yes. Is it secure or insecure? Hello? Okay, Varun, so what do you think? Is it secure or insecure to send data through URL? Yes. 
send in data through URL. Okay, I got a feedback, so what's that? Yeah, it is insecure. It's not that much secure because think that you are sending a password here. If you're sending password, and if this book, so you know that in the history, browser history, these URLs that you have visited will be remembered. For an example, if I close this. So what I can do? I can get that tab back, right? I have to undo that close in operation. And by doing that, I can get that tab back again. So you can see, so now my previous search is visible. Assume this happened to a user that arm search, I'm using a, uh, my office computer, right? I'm using office computer and sending data through and I'm sending data through uh, get request in the URL. And then I'm closing my window. And after that, one of my friends, he also log into the same computer and try to undo the operations that I have done. Try to undo, try to go to the history. In the history, he can see these URLs. If my passwords were there in the URL, URL like a password, if my password were there in the URL, he can see the password also. So that is insecure. Right? That is insecure. Therefore, get request is insecure. But post request, on the other hand, post is secure because if you are sending data through post request, it is secure because it's not sent to URL. URL will not be updated. So it is post request, right? That is, those are the two requests, right? What I was telling is about uh, the form methods. There are two form methods, get method and post method. Get method is sending data through the URL and post method, method is sending data through data securely without sending it through the URL. So post is more secure than get, but get is faster. Get is instant faster. So you can say, you can send limited amount of data. There's a character limit. So those are the things about. So, okay, shall we write down this? So please write down form handling. And first of all, please write form tag. How you define the form tag. So you mentioned the name of the form that is unique identifier, which is used to identify the form in coding. Then the method, method can have two values, get or post. Depending on the value, the data sent through the URL or it is sent secretly. For passwords, it's better to send using post. It's advisable. And so it's uh, like non-sensitive information like search results, search queries. You can send that through the URL. That doesn't matter. Right? And so if you're sending through the URL, it is faster, but you can send only a limited amount of characters in the URL. Uh, but uh, in the post request, you can send unlimited amount of instructions in the post request and also send the files and also in the secure way without displaying the URL to user that is post request. Let's learn about this practically. Let's learn about these two methods practically after writing this. And the next is action. Action is basically the page responsible, the page responsible to take actions the page responsible to take actions right that is action that means to which page you are submitting this data to which page you are submitting this data will be there in action right okay that is about the form so please write down this part quickly form handling form tag and so what are these attributes please write down this Right. Now let's see this practically, right? So let's create a form and let's try to do these things, learn these things practically. So please do this with me. First of all, I'm trying to create a form. So this form will allow user to input Maybe the first name and last name, very small form. So let's try with that. Writing PHP form.
okay form name this uh, method get action is hash let's keep that as it is okay so same form that i have handled using javascript i can keep this uh, i don't need this part that means uh, yeah input type but it's okay i need only this part so here actually i'm updating this Let me save this in our XAMPP folder, sorry, my MAMP folder. In your case, it is XAMPP. Actually, I have XAMPP and both I'm using MAMP. So I'm going to select that HD docs and I'm going to create a new folder there. Inside HD docs folder, a new folder name, my form. And saving this as index.php. So here I'm setting this to submit other things as here. So let me go to the MAMP and start MAMP service. Because you need to access this using a server. Here the service started. So I have to access my folder, localhost. So what is the folder name? PHP4. Okay, I'm accessing the form and you can see, oh, this PHP form is not found in the service. What's, okay, I have started that. PHP form, let me see, is it there or not there? Map. inside that HD docs. Okay, uh, my form is the uh, PHP form, not PHP, it's my form, right? Sorry, my mistake, my form. Okay, you can see input box to input name, last name and full name is read only, you cannot input anything. Show name will here, so it will submit data to the URL because get request, but this is empty. If I fill with data, the soon and Elan channel. So if I show name, you can see FN equal the soon and LN equal Elan channel. So it's submitting data. Okay, first do this. Create this form first. Right. I'll tell you why I have made this uh, full name read only. So, because uh, when you insert the first name and last name, full name can be generated. So, no need to get that full name back again because when you are entering the first name and last name, you can generate the full name and insert it to the form. That is one thing. That is why I just made this uh, read only. But uh, here, without uh, just, you can just ignore that even. So, you can. We can do this even without the full name part. But uh, so that keeping that is up to you. If you wish, like this was there in the JavaScript because so let's say somebody entered like this. Somebody has entered the Asun Nilan journal uh, uh, as the first name and entered some uh, other full name, Kasun Daranji or some other full name. So then there, there are some mismatching, right? So because uh, the full name can be generated within so this is aggregated. So this can be generated using full first name and the last name. Therefore, I kept this full name. Actually, I want to display when I click there, I want to display full name here. So I can keep the text box or I can even remove that. That doesn't matter. Okay, have you finished copying this part? So is there anything else that you need to know other than this? Okay, so let's let's assign. So here. Actually, FRM name, uh, method get and action is hash. Action is hash means it's submitting to the same page. Same page. Actually, I can write a PHP, but please note that I have saved this file as index.php with the PHP extension because if you wish to include, but right, if you wish to include uh, PHP code inside HTML file, you need to save the file as PHP. Otherwise, 
So you will not be able to run PHP codes. But if you wish to write PHP code inside this file, you have to save the file as PHP. But pure HTML also you can save as PHP, no harm. Even if it is a pure HTML or HTML only file, no PHP code at all, but still you can save as PHP, it doesn't matter. So PHP is like, if you have PHP code, it is compulsory to save as PHP. But if you don't have PHP code, it is okay to save as PHP. Doesn't matter, it won't do anything, right? Here actually you don't have any PHP code, but I have saved as PHP, still it's working, right? Still it's working. Okay, let's uh, try to handle the PHP now. I'm going to handle PHP here after the form. So I can include PHP code segment. So what I'm going to write here. First of all, I'm going to check whether the form is submitted or not. If he set dollar underscore get, if he set dollar underscore, this is how you get the get request here because you are submitting this using get, so you can get this. If he said get means, so you can echo form submitted. This is just a check-in code, right? Else form echo form not submitted. So let's say you are a fresh user visiting this page. A fresh user visiting this page. You can say, oh, what's, what's wrong? So let me refresh. We set dollar underscore get. You mm, value, right, FN? So. So you can say form not submitted, form not submitted because I have not sent the first name, whatever the things I have not sent. So form not submitted. But if I try to submit the first name, the soon and show full name, you can see the form submitted, it will come. But if I try to submit the empty form like this, if I try to submit empty form, it says, ah. so once submitted, it's like this, but if I'm not trying and if I try to reload the page, it says form not submitted, but when you show full name, you can see it is edited as form submitted. But I don't need to display form submitted, form submitted, instead of that, I need to generate a full name. So how can I do that? You can say dollar $fn equal, so dollar underscore get this $fn, that is your first name. Similarly, you can get last name, dollar ln equal dollar underscore get ln. So that is this ln, this ln. After that full name, dollar full equal dollar first name, concatenate with added. So in JavaScript, we have used plus sign, but here we are using dot to add. First name space, dollar last name. So why? Because in the between, you need to have space. First name and last name, there is space. Now, full name is ready. Now, we can display it. Echo dollar full. You can just display it. So, let's try. Refresh. The soon. Milan Jenner. This is empty. Show full name. And you can see it's displaying the Sunil Lanjan. That means whatever I'm submitting will be accepted by this. That's why it displays. But if I submit this empty, nothing. No errors, but nothing will be there. But if I submit this with some value, you can see that value will be displayed. Right? Okay, so let's try this code now. This dollar underscore fn is check-in. First one is just a check-in condition to check whether the user has submitted. If submitted, you get the values, first name, last name, merge them together and display the full name. Okay, do this now. So if there are, if there are any, any errors, 
preventing you running this code or any errors generated with those because don't tell this after the class saying uh, you couldn't understand anything but within the class tell me that because like we can correct that and move we can we can correct that and move on so that is the positive way of correcting this because you, you this might not be understand directly but so what we are doing so we have to gradually understand so don't be silent if you cannot understand the content tell me then we can correct and move. okay what we are doing here so through the form we are getting values we are actually getting the first name last name only full name we are not getting so you, that's why i said either we can remove it let me comment for the moment i'm just commenting this so this is html comment so then this part won't be executing executed by the browser so this will be treated as a comment so this section is no last name now now i'm typing my first name uh, and middle name and you can see it's submitted through the url fn equal dasun and ln equal nilanja this was asked in the examination how this is submitted either if file name is index.php if file name is index.php after a question mark the first variable <coughs> sorry first variable appears <coughs> index.php question mark then the first variable appears that is fn after that equal sign that's one ampersand sign last name so this is this will be asked the first first variable will begin with the question mark actually how this variable names are coming this variables names are actually the names given to the fields here name name fn name ln right name fn name ln so if i give a name to this one this will also be submitted if i let, let me give name let's say sub kela demo name sub then if i try to uh, like uh, show name you can see uh, here this one is also sent in sub equal show name a right? so this is name is sub the value is show name so it's sent in sub equal show name right that is the nature if it has a name and value it will be sent to the url this name is fn the value is entered by the user this uh, name is ln the value will be entered by the user so name equal value first name equal dasu ln equal nilanjana and sub equal show plus means space right plus k in space like show plus name shows show name so if i want to give first name as let's say first name under the unknown dasu plus nilanjana and the last name i want to give this as uh, first name equal dasu plus nilanjana and ln equal let's say ln equal sirima so if i send like this you can see dasun nilanjana sirima the first name and last name is like first name and last name will be here and then the uh, sorry first name and last name is dasun nilanjana will be here something like this dasun nilanjana sirima so then the first name and first name will be dasun plus nilanjana okay? so first name is dasun plus nilanj the last name is same so that will be submitted to the server okay now i hope you have idea how the forms respond to the uh, this actually then what i am doing so this is submitted to the gate this syntax says is set kela kiyan if value is set if this has a value if this has a value means it's already submitted then only it has a value so then you are using the same get method dollar underscore get this is a syntax dollar underscore get then the first name variable this one is taken and assign that to the if let let me change this to first name otherwise you might confuse l name so then here you can say first name l name right actually this first name variable take the value of f a last name variable will take the value of l n then that will be concatenated added together and in the middle there will be space and finally you are displaying the full name okay otherwise if this form is not submitted you are saying form not not submitted okay, that means if you clear these and if you just put in enter form not submitted will be the answer but like it's ugly to display like that so you can remove that part also this is a single line comment in python i'm removing sorry a single line comment in php okay if you are getting any errors please tell me now itself right 
Okay, I'm getting the first name, last name, and generating the first. Can you do this? Do this exercise? Please write this as a question. So I'll copy this down first. This need, this need to be included to the note. You can also, after doing that, please include this to note. Example for get request. So please write this one, a question. Enter three numbers and display the total, average, and average, minimum, and the maximum values. of the of the records entered by the user okay please do this exercise now quickly so this is not much difficult right uh, so if you have done this you can share the screen so if you have done that, please indicate, like, please tell me in the chat, and I'll give chance to share the screen also. Right, if not, so this is not difficult. So what you need to do is, instead of the first name, so what you have to write, uh, number one. Uh, number one, or no, enter number one, something. Let's say here, N1. And uh, so let's add that. I'm copying and pasting one more time. Number two and in two. Number two and in two. So, all ah, right, okay. Then uh, the third one, you can just copy and paste again. That is number three. You can say in three. Then what you need to do, you have to get this number one, number two. Let's say here, in one is input and uh, then uh, you can get N1, N2, and uh, the next is N3. N3. So let's uh, rename this as uh, dollar num1, dollar num2, and dollar num3. Right? Then to add this, you can say dollar total equal dollar num1 plus num2 plus num3. Num1 plus num2 plus num3. Then the average dollar avg equal dollar total divided by 3. That is the Average. Let's display the total and the average first. You can say echo. Uh, you can say total is go total is. Let's concatenate dot. And after that, let's concatenate a br to go to the next line. Okay. Similarly, let's display the average. Average is, then this is AVG. So let's save and refresh the page. And you can see three numbers this time. Our show name, this should be renamed as not show name, just let's put, uh, oh, sorry, no mistake. Um, here should be not show name. Let's say calculate or something. Okay, then when you calculate, so its value is uh, input type when you calculate. Okay, save it and now you can see. When I calculate, it's same. Totally zero, average is zero because I have not entered any numbers. Let's enter some numbers. And then you can see the total and average is calculated. This is easy. Do you think it's difficult? It's very, very easy. 
here this is the total and the average it's very easy right so it's even not having types in python you have types no integer uh, float boolean double like so these some types are there no data types but here you don't even have types you can just do it using just variables that is enough and then what uh, the largest and the smallest right the minimum and the maximum that you can do uh, by comparing so let's say dollar minimum equal i'm just putting dollar number one blindly and uh, similarly dollar max also because if there is only one number so that is the minimum and that is the maximum dollar mean equal this one and so maybe let's assign another one another line dollar max also equal to dollar number one that is in case if you have only one number but if you can compare if dollar num two uh, greater than dollar mean sorry dollar max you can say the new x new max is the new max is the max is uh, that is that number then another if again similarly you can compare it whether it is greater than whether it is greater than num3 also if so num3 is the max this way you are checking is which is the max and ultimately you can print the max. similarly you can check whether so is it less than the minimum if so minimum is this dollar minimum is this if not or next case you have to check whether is it less than number three also so if it is less than number three then the minimum is number three okay after this operation you can print echo maximum is minimum is That's it. Save. Go and refresh. You can see minimum and the maximum. So let's see. Maximum 89, minimum 22. Correct, right? So let's enter another number. Let's say 1, 2, 3. So the maximum is 3. Minimum is 1. Total is 6 and average is 2. Likewise, you can do the calculation, but for the numbers. If you try to give some text in between, so when I try to calculate, you can see it also do the calculation. So that is by considering the text value, right? That is by considering the text value, but so better enter the numbers because otherwise it is insensible for the general users. Okay, please uh, apply that quickly or write down in your book if you have power cut or something, just write down in your book later you can add this to your uh, coding. So our form part is already written, I think you have to write the PHP part. Quickly do that. Right, uh, the next thing. Right now we have done this uh, one and uh, the next exercise is this. Uh, so uh, this is actually the get request, right? So next, uh, so once you've done this, so let's do this using post exercise also, post method also, this is get method. And so let's use post method two in post method, we have to replace this using post. Here, the get method, you can see all the values sent through the URL. So let me replace this using post now. P O S T, post. And here also, I have to replace all these things using post because I'm using the post method now. That is the only difference, no other difference. Only thing is you have to replace this get request. Uh, with the post method with the post and the request and here also post 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 all the gets 
you have to replace this in post. Let's save this and let me explore. This time, okay, now my form, I'm entering one, two, three as values. Please observe when I calculate, nothing goes to the URL, but still the values are calculated similar to the previous. So if I enter large values, all the values calculated similar to the previous. So total is correct, average, maximum, mean. But you can see the values are not same. Values are not sent through the URL. So that is the difference. Especially when you want to send passwords uh, and sensitive data, we are using post method. So that is the only difference. So applicability, applying this is exactly similar to the get request. But you have to replace all the gets with post. And here also, there is no, you have to replace one, two, three, four, five places only. Please take a screenshot of that. And now you know about the post and get request both. Here, post and get request both. And now you know which method to be used, especially when transmitting secure data, and which method to be used when transmitting non secure data that you know. Right? Okay. In the Next phase, next day, I'll be discussing some uh, more advanced implementations like complete form. You can try with a complete, you can just give a try actually at home as a homework. You can. Yes, we are doing the SQL and PHP linking. That is, uh, next week we can do, yes. Next week we can do the PHP SQL linking too. But before that, I need to do a complete form. Complete. I need to submit a complete form. So your duty, please create a. So I'll give you as a homework. Please write down this. Please write down this. Question. So I'll replace this. For now. The next question. Create a form to enter user data such as name, uh, date of birth, complete address, including the country, gender, civil status, hobbies, telephone number, username or email, password, title of the name, A profile picture, etc. So you can input this data. So you have to do actually no need to code, but you have to create this form by next week. Please create this form. We will do coding for this form, including how to handle uh, profile picture, picture files, and how to insert this data into database. I'll be covering that part next week. Okay, so please write down question or take a screenshot, right? Then see you all next week today, good night. Thank you, sir, good night. Thank you, sir, good night. Okay.